So it is an absolutely gorgeous fall morning out right now. And in our part of the world, fall is garlic planting season, which is particularly important to us because we love garlic. So we want to plant a whole bunch of it. That's why we went down to a local farmer and we picked up two braids of garlic. Between the two of them, there's about 35 of these bulbs and it only cost us like 20 bucks. But the great thing is that we break each of these bulbs into the individual cloves and these are the things that we plant. And then next year, we come back around August and each one of these turn into a brand new one of these. So there's, depending on the variety, there's between five and 10 cloves per bulb which means that best case, if we plant 10 bulbs worth this year, next year, we'll end up with 100 of them. But as usual, this is something we've never done before. So it's all gonna be an experiment. But because it's gonna be an experiment, that means we can play around a little bit. So if you saw our last video where we talked about the Ruth Stout method, where we just basically used a whole bunch of hay, this is gonna look pretty similar, but a few variations because garlic is a little bit different. So we better get peeling. Let's get feeling. <laughs> So we started off by removing the garlic bulbs from the braids and then carefully breaking them into individual cloves. This was pretty much exactly the same process you would follow if you were planning to cook with the garlic, except with a bit more attention to not damage the protective skin. Now we technically have two different types of garlic, but since they were both braided together, keeping them separated quickly became more trouble than it was worth. We figure that if this first crop does well, then we'll likely experiment with different varieties next year. But for now, we decided to just gather them all up together in one large bowl. All right, it looks like Paula's on top of things here, so while she finishes breaking the cloves apart, I'll explain how we're actually gonna plant them. Now, most people will tell you to first prepare your soil by tilling in fertilizer and manure, then plowing the area into long furrows. But while this is likely good advice, we're not most people. So our plan is a little bit different. We really liked how easy the Ruth Stout method was to set up, so we've decided to double down on that experiment and try it for our garlic as well. However, as you may recall, a Ruth Stout garden is supposed to be prepared in the fall, so that the hay has all winter to kill the sod and begin composting into a rich soil layer by spring. But in this case, we need to plant the garlic right away, so we don't have that kind of time. So to speed up the process, we've decided to incorporate a couple of other common permaculture techniques. First, we'll cover the area with a layer of cardboard. This will eventually break down, but in the meantime, it should do a nice job of smothering out the grass. Next, we'll add a layer of the old composted hay that we inherited when we purchased the property. This is the stuff that we'll actually be planting in. And finally, we'll insert the garlic cloves and cover everything with a layer of hay. As we mentioned, in colder climates, where the growing seasons are shorter, garlic is planted in the fall. This gives it just enough time to sprout before going dormant for the winter. The hay helps to insulate it from the freezing temperatures, and then in the spring, it has a good head start for the summer. Okay, so that's how we're planning to build the garden, but now let's talk about where. If you've been following our channel for a while, then this garden layout is likely beginning to look familiar. Each of these rectangles represent our designated permaculture beds, either already constructed or planned for the future. And these dots represent the eight-foot fence we've been installing to protect our food supply from deer, rabbits, and other furry friends. But from what we've been told, critters don't tend to care much about garlic, so there's no sense in wasting valuable fence space. Which is why we've instead opted to expand outside the perimeter. And besides, depending on how well the garlic does, we may end up wishing to plant an even larger section of our field in the future, as a cash crop. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. For now, we'll start with a 10 foot by 20 foot plot and see how that goes. The first step was to mow the area so that we had a flat space to work with. Next, we used our measuring tape, string, and some simple math to mark the perimeter of our new garden. And speaking of which, here's a quick tip for ensuring that your corners are square in such a large area. Once you've measured all four sides, take a second to measure the diagonals as well. If your corners are square, then these two values should be identical. If not, then your angles are off and you'll need to make some adjustments. This trick always works, no matter the size or shape. Well, as long as it's a rectangle. 
So once our perimeter was marked, we needed to find some cardboard. And in a perfect example of life coming full circle, we just so happened to have a collection of old boxes, left over from when we had our stuff in storage while living in our camper van. So as Paula peeled off the tape and labels, we reminisced about our adventure of a lifetime, and how once again our hard work and sacrifice was continuing to pay off. Not only did van life help us to buy this property and ensure that we'd appreciate it, but now these boxes, which were used to protect our valuables for two years, will play an important role in helping to feed us for years to come. Okay, enough of that. Back to work. With all of the non-biodegradable bits removed, we spread the cardboard on the ground and soaked it with the hose. Making sure that the cardboard is wet serves several purposes. It gives it a head start in composting, it helps the garlic sprout, but most importantly, it stops the cardboard from blowing away in the wind. Next, we began adding a layer of compost about 4 or 5 inches deep, but we didn't have to cover the entire space because we've chosen to divide our garden into 6 2 foot by 10 foot rows with a foot and a half in between for walking paths. And since we won't be growing anything on the paths, there's no point in wasting any of our compost. The rows and paths only added up to 19 and a half of our 20 foot space, so we simply tacked the extra 6 inches onto the final row. That'll come in handy in a moment. After breaking apart all of the garlic bulbs, we were left with 240 decent sized cloves and about 20 smaller ones. So in each of the rows, we'll be planting 40 cloves with a 6 inch spacing. From what we've read, garlic should be planted pointy end up and at a depth of approximately 2 to 3 times its own length. So to keep this consistent, we made a couple of measuring sticks, laid out our measuring tape as a guide, and began poking holes. Next it was time to drop in the garlic. Once again, the cloves are planted pointy end up and then covered lightly with compost. With both of us working, it was only a matter of minutes before we planted all 240. But don't forget, we still had the 20 smaller ones and that extra 6 inches of space. So as one final experiment, we decided to simply drop the last batch of garlic cloves right on top of the compost to see what happens. Apparently, potatoes, onions, and other root vegetables will grow just fine when simply tossed on the soil and then covered with hay. But we have no idea if this will work with garlic too. So what the heck, we're willing to gamble 20 cloves to find out. Once everything was planted, we covered the paths with leaves. By spring, these should be fairly well packed so that we can easily walk on them, and over time they'll break down and add additional nutrients to the soil on the edges of our rows. And finally, using our measuring stick from the previous video, we covered the rows in about 8 inches of hay. Now all that's left is to wait until spring and see if anything grows. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.